Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre and today we want to talk about competition. Does it, is it helpful? Does it hurt? I found it, it's, it does a little bit of both. For me in my career, it's helped, especially in the early stages because I'm, I'm a competitive person. I'm a person who likes sports. I like winning. If we're going to play a game, we're going to play a sport I want to win. And that drives me sometimes to do things I normally wouldn't do. So in the early days, if there was somebody else who joined and I joined and there was a little competition to see who's going to get to one of those ranks, the next ranks, man, that would give me some, some juice in order to be able to, to maybe face my fears uh, more than I normally would, maybe take more action than I normally would. Uh, if there was a competition, I remember one of the first real competitive things that happened in my network marketing career was they told me the company was doing three weeks after I joined the company was doing a regional training event it was a free event on a Saturday morning all you had to do is bring guests and they would do a whole you know two three hour deal they do a presentation and a training would come from this person would come from out of town and somebody told me whoever has the most people at that event is going to win and that's all I needed to hear as a competitive person. I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. So I pulled out all the stops. I called all my family. I called my friends. I called prospects. I had them bring their prospects. I told them it's a once in a lifetime situation. And I ended up with over 100 people there at that event. The whole event had more than 1,000, but I had over 100 as a person who's involved for three weeks in the business. And the presenter had a $100 bill, and he said, okay, you know, who has the most people, who has the most people? They did a countdown, I was the one, I ran up, on, uh, ran up to the stage, he gave me a $100 bill, I was super pumped, I got some prestige, I was the winner, I got a $100 bill, it was super cool. So that drove me in the early stages through some of the ranks. And if you're a competitively minded person, it can drive you too. Sometimes you need to create competition. Find somebody that's at the same rank as you and create a little contest. Who's going to get to the next rank? Or who's going to bring the most people to the next convention? Or who's going to create the mo you know, uh, add the, mo the most customers over the next 30 days? Or who's going to do the most presentations in the next 10 days? Or whatever it happens to be. You can create competitions all over the place. So for, for me, I, I used competition to create kind of artificial reasons to do the things I should be doing anyway, okay? Then, second part of competition that worked for me is I used it with my group. It was something that, it's kind of like sibling rivalry. If I, if I brought in five brand new people that I recruited in a month, let's say, I would immediately try to see who is driven by competition. And I, if I had John and I had Mary, I'd say, John, I, you know, I think Mary thinks she can beat you to that first rank. And John would go, oh, yeah? Oh, well, when does she think she can do it? I, she's, she's shooting to do it by, by this, you know, next Monday. He says, well, I'm doing it by Sunday then. And John would go to work and do it by Sunday. And then i go to Mary, and I'd say, guess what? John's trying to get to that rank by Sunday. You said you're going to get there by Monday. Wouldn't it be cool to beat John? It would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? And she'd go, yeah, oh, yeah, I want to beat him. What time did he say he was going to do it on Sunday? Noon. He's going to do it by noon on Sunday. All right, I'm doing it by Saturday night for sure. I was going to go out on Saturday night, but now I'm going to go. So I'd go back and forth with people on my team to create competition, whether it was rank or getting people to events or customers or act, you know, actions, how many home parties or whatever. I would create competition within the organization um, you know, with brand new people. And I also created competition inside of organizations where it was, they were similar. If there were some leaders that were of similar size, we'd create higher level competitions in order to be able to get to the next level. And it was always fun and it was always, it wasn't ever mean spirited, but um, it worked for me on those two levels. And I think it can work for you too. If you're driven competitive, some people have, have been raised, I have, um, I have two nephews. Uh, I have more than two nephews, but I have, my, my one brother Caleb has two boys. And one is super competitive, and he's the older of the two. So competitive that he had to win, and his younger brother had to lose, okay, in every game. 
And because of that push, the younger brother, because he was younger, he couldn't beat the older brother. He just stopped all competition. He was out. He's not playing. So that was the only way he could win. So to this day, he's very averse to competition. He, that's not what drives him at all. And matter of fact, it turns him off. Now, the older of the two, give me a contest. Give me some competition. Give me something to win. He's ready to go after it. So just understand if whatever drives you, but if competition drives you or some people in your organization, use that as a tool to create some excitement, some fun, some enthusiasm, some, you know, some fresh vibe with it. Now, let me talk about the, the, the downside of competition. One is if a person comes from a background or has some life experience that causes them to feel negatively about competition, just make sure that you're not pushing them when they're not prepared to be pushed that way. Um, they might see that as being belittled or um, being embarrassed. And you want to make sure that you're not painting everybody in your organization with the same brush. So just be aware, number one. Um, when competition becomes comparing, I think it gets dangerous. Because here's the thing. Everybody gets involved with, in, with network marketing. They come from a different background. When I first got involved in network marketing, I had 18 jobs, okay, prior to 22 years old. So, and I wasn't really perceived as a giver. I was more perceived as a taker than a giver. So when I got involved, I got punished a little bit based upon the life that I've lived up until that point. The fact that I had 18 jobs, the fact that I never finished anything. In fact, I barely got out of high school and barely you know, didn't finish college. The fact that I was only working, you know, each job average 90 days. All of those things punished me and punished the opportunity that I was connected with. Now, another person might have been an incredible giver for 40 years, and every time somebody's moving their apartment, they're there to help. And every time, you know, they're always sending out a Christmas card to everybody. They RSVP for everything. They call for no reason. They, you know, they've just been a, a giver of a person. And when they get involved in network marketing, man, they shoot, they, they, you know, they take off because everyone listens. Everybody wants to pay, pay them back for being nice to them uh, over the course of their life. So... What I understood is I couldn't compete. The only way I could compete with a person who's lived a better life than me is I could do more action. And I was competitively driven. But when I found myself comparing myself to other people in network marketing, other people in my company, uh, I got a little discouraged because the comparison itself started to make me think there was something wrong with me. Why are these people growing so fast? You know, and I didn't know their life experience. I didn't know what they brought to the table. And I didn't know if they had done anything like this before. I didn't know any of those things. Um, all I knew is I, I didn't feel like I could compete. And I, it was discouraging. I started to feel like there's something wrong with me. And at that stage, what, what was helpful for me was to compete with me. So only compare myself against my previous self. Every day I'm going to say, you know, can I do a little bit better than I did yesterday? The next week, can I do a little bit better than I did last week? And I started to let go of comparing myself with others and feeling really miserable because they were making $100,000 a year, 250000 or 500000 and I was just barely making enough to pay the bills. Uh, I stopped comparing myself to the, how fast they were getting there and I started to treat myself as if I was going to live forever. If I'm going to live forever, and I just, so long as I get better a little bit every week, eventually I'll get there too. So it's not about how fast that you get there. It's, it's the fact that you get there. So I, I, I transfer. Now I'm still competitive. Okay. I still like competition. I still like the fun of pushing myself and having these artificial wins and losses type situation. Um, but I compare myself more to myself, my previous self, now than I compare myself to somebody else. You know, I, I don't think of myself uh, like I have to be on the same trajectory as somebody else anymore. I just have to be better than I was yesterday, better than I was last week, better than I was last month, and continue that process. And I find that that's really healthy for me. And I, I feel that progress is perfection. If I'm progressing, that's perfection. And so long as I'm growing, as long as I'm contributing, then I'm happy. Okay? So 
Competition, to kind of wrap this up, yes, can be good. It, it was for me, and it can be for some people in your organization, maybe for you. If it is, if you understand that about yourself, use it as a tool. Have fun with it. There's nothing like fun competition, so long as it's not mean-spirited. If there's people in your organization, use it with them. If they're driven by that, little short-term goals, little short-term competitions, uh, use that. As, as a lever in order to be able to get more action, more activity, help them face their fears. That's really all it is. It's a tool to help people face their fears and face their insecurities and take action. Um, and just beware that you're not comparing yourself so much against people who might have a different life experience than you. I see people get discouraged. They get involved and they're like, well, and they start saying, well, I'm just a stay-at-home mom, and I'm just this, and I'm just that, and they're so powerful, they're so successful, they're, and they're comparing themselves with somebody else that had a completely different life trajectory up until this point, and they quit instead of just comparing to them, their previous selves and getting better every day, and understanding that, and having the hope that they're going to get there eventually too. So just make sure you don't compare too much, and you don't put competition on people that aren't wired for competition. That's you know, the pros are use it to motivate you, use it to motivate your team. The cons are don't compare with others. And, uh, and when it comes to somebody who's not wired for competition, just be sensitive to that. Okay? So I hope this helps. Pros and cons of competition. Hope you can use it to build your business. Ladies and gentlemen, my wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.